Right, I'm up in like five minutes. This is how I DJ'd a festival with no experience. And let's just say it didn't go quite as I thought it would. Let's rewind six months ago. I make trap and drill beats for artists. But what you may not know is my first love for music when I was a kid was actually house and garage music. And you see, I've always secretly wanted to become a DJ. As a music producer, you don't usually perform songs. You usually leave that to the artist. We're usually in the studio 24 seven, making tracks, making records. But DJing just seems like the ultimate fun thing to do. You just rock up to a gig, stick your USB in, dance with the crowd, rock the party. So in the back of my mind, I've always thought like, I really want to give this a go. Can I actually become a DJ? So in this video, I decided to become a professional DJ. In January 2023, I decided to start my DJing journey. And in the beginning, honestly, I had no idea. I had no idea where to start. I thought if I could get some lessons, then maybe I could fast track the process, speed up that beginning learning curve. And so I decided to invest in some DJ equipment. We need something to chick -chick -chick spin. The industry standard seems to be Pioneer CDJ 3000 decks. You need at least two of them and a mixer. Altogether though, that setup cost around like 10K, which is a little bit out of my budget, can't lie. And I got this one right here, which costs like 1K. Definitely still an investment, but doesn't damage my wallet nearly as much as the CDJ 3000. Just got my first DJ controller, let's go. I decided to go with the Pioneer DJ DDJ 1000. That's what was recommended to me as like a good beginner first time DJ controller. And then I got to work. I started off doing open format, which essentially means playing tracks that is different genres, mainly hip hop and stuff on the charts. In the beginning, let me tell you, it was tough. It took me some time. I get to turn on the fucking fader. It took me at least a week to get my first transition down. When you just get your first decks and make a clean transition. And the transition is basically mixing from one track to another track seamlessly. And then about a month into DJing, something incredible happened. I was waiting at the train station and I bumped into this guy. This is Tom. We got chatting. He said that he's seen some of my videos and he said that he mainly DJs house and techno, but he also runs a festival called Into The Woods. It's like a huge event that happens in some random forest far out into the countryside in England. Thousands of people turn up and they come and party. DJs from around the world come and play. And a light bulb just kind of like shot off into my head. I shot my shot, I asked, you know, it'd be sick if I could come down and play. And just like that, bam got my first DJ gig. Can't lie, I was super, super gassed, as you can imagine. But up until that point, I hadn't really dove into the world of house music just yet. I had a few months to prepare, so it was really time to just throw myself into it, get stuck in. This was like the goal. This was the light at the end of the tunnel. I had something to look forward to, something to prepare for, and it was time to just really, really get stuck in. All right, so for this set, I wanna play some of my own songs as well. I don't wanna just play other people's songs. I know that's kind of normal, you do that, but I also wanna play some of my own material as well. And to be honest, like I've never really sat down and made house music like that before. So it's definitely gonna be something new for me, but I'm up for the challenge. Nines just dropped his new album called Crop Circle 2, and there's a song on there that I really like called Calendar. Six days by my side, four hours bad, but she got way too much pride. There's a section in here that I think would be sick as like a house, a house beat. Like I got an idea for it. Thursday, Thursday, Friday, All my ex girls I love the same way. Uh, I ain't waiting to beat car, got a different girl for every day of the week. That bit right there, I think that could sound sick. I've got like an idea for it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and put something together. Alright, so as you can see. There is a ton, a ton of different layers on here. And I've put together something with that sample in it. I'll play you a little bit. Let me skip to the drop. This one goes insane. I can't wait to spin this one. This one's gonna be sick. Another day, another house track that needs to be made. I can't lie. 
I'm having a lot of fun making these house tracks. As I'm making it and I'm sitting down, I just can't help but, but move. They just, I don't know, they're just such good vibes. It's really fun making this kind of genre. Every now and again, it's nice to just switch up, try something different. And I'm really, really enjoying making these kind of tracks. I just finished one up here. This one might be like one of my favorites that I made. It's way more chill than anything that I've made so far. But I'm really, really feeling this one. And if you recognize the samples, let me know in the comments below. So dreamy. This one is a vibe. I've also made some other tracks. I'll give you a quick teaser. Hey. Yeah, that one is that one is fire. I made this one, it kind of gives me like old house vibes, like some classic vibes. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to spin that one as well. That one is sick. We're about two weeks away from the gig right now. And I spent the majority of this morning, two, three hours, just listening to loads and loads of new tracks. Trying to find some new tracks that I feel like could fit into my mix, fit into my set really well. And then going ahead and buying them. That's something that is new to me. I never realized in the beginning you had to buy MP3 tracks, but that's just how this world works. You buy MP3 tracks from a place like Beatport, you stick it on your USB, and you go from there. I actually thought you could just stream, but no, you actually have to have the file. So I've gone through, I've liked a bunch of different tracks on Spotify. I've gone for more like a deep house, minimal house kind of vibe. It is kind of chill, but then it has some parts which kind of like really increase the energy and it calms down again and really increases the energy. I think this is gonna be a nice mix. I gotta be honest, in the last few weeks, before the set, I probably put in like 20, 30 hours of just pure DJ practice, mastering like my transitions and stuff, trying to find like which tracks really mesh together well and transition well. And I made like maybe eight or nine tracks for the set. I was prepping for this hardcore, like this was an exam in a school or something. Oh. Good morning, it's 7.30 and today is the day. Today is the day of the festival. So, got my morning coffee. Caramel soya ice latte. I've been up for hours, maybe like two hours already. I woke up super early. Just didn't really get too much sleep. Maybe I'm just way, way too excited. I've got to be honest, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling very relaxed, very calm. I don't really feel super nervous. I feel good. The one thing that I'm actually thinking about though is that for some reason, on the CDJ 3000, the deck that I usually use when I DJ. It never happens on any other deck but this deck. When I hit the hot cue to jump to a certain part of the track, sometimes there is like this weird lag thing where it contrises kind of wrong and it skips a beat and that can really mess up a whole set. It can mess up a whole mix, a whole transition. So I'm just thinking in my head today, I might not even it's gonna sound crazy, but I might not even mess around with the hot cues too, too much. Sometimes if I hit it right on time, then it's perfect. It transitions kind of like seamlessly. But sometimes I hit it on time. I swear I hit it on time, but it just goes and then it messes up the whole thing. But aside from that little thing that's on my mind, pretty much we're good to go. And for today's outfit, we have got the Yeezy Gap Top. We've got the Mahara. Yasuhiru shoes, they're really chunky, but it's pretty much uniform at this point. And we got some represent trousers, nice and comfy. Let's get it, we're ready to go. All right, we just pulled up to the festival. I'm ready to go, the sun is out, it's nice, even though I think it's gonna rain. It's way more muddy than I thought it was gonna be, so, I don't think I'm going to be switching into my new shoes. I think we'll just step with these for now. I'm feeling good, ready to go. All right, I'm up in like five minutes. Let's go. It was my time. I jumped on the stage, put in my USB, hit play. The DJ before me that was on stage, he had the crowd going. So I was walking into a really, really hype, hype crowd, but as soon as I played my music, I knew 
fact that my set was probably a bit too chill for what was going to happen. I still had some people dancing, the butterfly ladies were having a great time. So far, 10 out of 10, Ocean smashing it. Nice high spot, oh, no, 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 no. nice house vibes. So, turn our attention to Jay Cactus over here. Jay Cactus, yeah. how would you rate the music so far? Music's banging, solid 10.5 out of 10. 10.5. As you can see, we're all getting lit. 11 out of 10. We're out here, into the woods, survive the sick. Brother shelling it right now. I had a few people on the dance floor going, but I can't lie, it felt like I had made the dance floor disappear. And I'd say like 60 to 70% of the people kind of just disappeared and went to another stage. I had some songs on my playlist that were going to be even more chill than the ones that I'd chosen. So I had to kind of pivot, as they say, read the crowd and play something a bit more upbeat and a bit more hype. But still, I couldn't help but notice that there was just way less people than before. Oh, she's doing this thing still. Doing really well today. Um, yeah, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 for the vibes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely cannot hear out this ear properly. It's a bit... Dill. Dumb. Dill. Oh, see, I can't even hear myself properly. It went okay. I'm, I'm satisfied with that as a first, as a first, what do you call it? As a first mix. What I'm most happy with is the tracks that I produced got the most reaction, which is cool. But I think I needed something a bit more energetic, but I'm cool with that, that's calm. I just did my first gig as a DJ. And honestly, my thoughts about this one, I was hoping it would go a little bit better, I can't lie to you. I felt like low key, maybe I scared the, the crowd away because the DJ that was on before me he had the crowd going like quite hype as he left then I jumped on he was really hype his music was hype I jumped on with like my more chill calm mix feel like it was maybe just a little bit too calm for the audience it felt like 70% of the crowd went away to the other stage it is what it is there was some people though that really were moving really were feeling it dancing and stuff which was cool but I guess that kind of thing comes with experience when people say DJs, you really got to learn to read the crowd. That's where it comes in. I think maybe I probably should have like switched out my more chill tracks and just gone straight into the hype and just built from there. But you live and you learn. I definitely, 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 definitely want to have another gig and do this again because it was so much fun. I had so much fun making house tracks and performing. Guess you could say I got the bug now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button because it really, really helps and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this one right here on my second channel where I DJ for the first time my house mix and it's even got some of my unreleased tracks on there.